Ai Weiwei, thank you very much for coming on our program again. It's good to speak to you. How significant is the moment that's happening in China right now with all these demonstrations against zero COVID, but also people calling for the end of Xi Jinping? I think it's uh, very significant in the way people start to be conscious, not really conscious about the zero, but rather about the system. And the, the system does so much damage to ordinary people. The people has to suffer in past months being unbelievably locked down into their room. And they, if they not wear a mask or or walk out, they can get arrested, beaten, and uh, you know it's simply disaster uh, on the national wide scale. And China has been uh, under very severe control for past uh, um, years, but this is a unique. Never had a situation like this in in Chinese history or in human history. 1.4 billion people are trying to get, uh, you know, to fulfill the dream of a COVID zero and uh, to be completely put in a big prison. So the Chinese people, you're saying, have been essentially turned into prisoners in their own homes and have now woken up to this fact. They are being forced to this position uh, with lacking of uh, daily supply, no communication with others, and under such a very brutal uh, police police states uh, policy, and uh, young people would find no job. University students would find after graduate they would get nothing. So they start to have their own voice. Why do you think Xi Jinping? is pursuing this policy of COVID zero against Omicron, against a virus that is spreading like wildfire. Why do you think he's doing that? He must know about the negative consequences for his society and his economy. Nobody can guess in what an authoritarian's uh, mind. I mean, you even cannot ask a sim simple question, but uh, from, uh, um, from the policy, we understand several facts. Uh, one of them is they really want to demonstrate to the West how China functions and how authoritarian state uh, has a better uh, efficient uh, policy being, you know, being performed by the whole state, like one person. So they always demonstrate that, and uh, it seems they they believe this is the only way to 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 make China stronger. And the second guessing is they realize the vaccination in China is not very effective. So, if that uh, you know the if something happens, they simply doesn't have enough resource to cope with the situation. Mm -hmm. And do you think that these demonstrations are about people trying to just live their lives normally, get back to prosperity, or are they about democracy and freedom, or perhaps a bit of both? I think uh, most people just want to get back to the normal life. They are they are already used to the system. You know, they already think uh, prosperity and have a job and make make some money is uh, is uh, crucial for for next day or next month so i don't think a revolution would happen and uh, but, uh, of course very a few people realize that's a, a disease not a natural disease but a system system of disease the system would always uh, uh, amplifying those so called natural disease into an extreme degree then they later blame uh, someone else. So, yeah, that's, that's what I feel. So it's wrong for us to think that this is essentially a pro-democracy movement like Tiananmen Square. I, <laughs> I think uh, it's completely wrong to think that way. But of course, you can see uh, there's a sparkle of fires, uh, you know, uh, there. But uh, 
it's nice to hear someone, some young people understand this is a situation cannot be solved unless the system can be changed. And even like what happens in TM Square, that is national wide movement before this one. Mm. And uh, that was crushed by tanks and the military and the police and uh, is immediately become uh, uh, peaceful. And what happens in Hong Kong two, three years ago is the most impressive demonstration in the world. And, uh, you know, very rational, very educated uh, people peacefully asking, demanding very small, not even very political demanding, mm. still being uh, crushed and now has no voice at all. So do you think that democracy, democratic freedom, in China, in Hong Kong, is a lost cause? I don't think uh, there's a, some, uh, any chance for this kind of democracy to happen under this region. It's just not impossible. Do you think there's any danger then in these demonstrations to Xi Jinping's authority? Not at all. This is demonstration, even you amplify uh, amplified uh, 10 times or 100 times, still were not shaking the communist control. The party has uh, uh, over uh, 80 million people, almost uh, 100 million people uh, as a party member. And uh, they are very solid, uh, uh, would act or functions with the, the top leader's uh, idea, especially after the last meeting, uh, the central core of the community are really a bodies of the of, of the leader. So there's no way to shake it. So Xi Jinping will remain in charge as the autocrat of China for the foreseeable future. I think uh, Mr. Xi uh, would uh, uh, perform as uh, the, the most uh, solid uh, uh, and the most uh, um, uh, un unchangeable power for next years to come. Finally, um, our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak gave a speech yesterday in which he called for a robust pragmatism, robust pragmatism when it comes to dealing with China. So he criticized I them, but he also wants to have trade relations. What do you make of robust pragmatism? <laughs> I, I heard a part of his uh, comment. I think he, so far he's uh, probably the one of the clearest person describes the situation between West and China. And uh, of course, how the leaders will be skillfully dealing with the matter, we still have to watch. But do you approve of his policy of this robust pragmatism? What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know exactly what it means, but uh, I think uh, it's a challenge. It's a question to all the leaders in the West. How do you manage to handling uh, a very different culture, different civilization, a different understanding of our progress? And do you think that Rishi Sunak is on the right track here? Um, do I think what? Do you think that Rishi Sunak has got the right approach for China? Uh, well, I, I didn't see any approach. I see what he talks uh, seems uh, pretty clear. And, and what, describe what you mean by clear. What do you hear in that speech? I think uh, in China, in the old uh, textbook about the war, it, it says you should understand uh, yourself and you understand your enemy then you would have a, a war. So I think uh, the understanding of each side is uh, crucial before take any questions, uh, any actions. And from what you heard in Rishi Sunak's speech, you think that he understands the challenge of China? Well, I think he clearly understands that there's a fundamental difference. And that difference uh, uh, would make China even more stronger and the challenge will be even bigger for the West. And do you think our response to China should be to, you know, turn our backs on them, or should we engage with them? I think you always, I, I always think uh, under certain condition you have to engage with anybody. Uh, you, you, you don't want to live in the world. You lost your enemies, but uh, this is uh, even more dangerous.
What about America's approach to China, Joe Biden's approach to China? I think America have a lot of secret deals with China, and they, they say something, maybe they do something else. Ai Weiwei, thank you very much indeed. Okay, what a pleasure.